Welcome to the Maintenance Community Podcast, a podcast for people who want to learn all things about maintenance and reliability. I'm your host, Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder of Upkeep. In each episode, I'll be meeting with an expert within our maintenance community to take a deep dive in a topic sourced from our maintenance community Slack group. Today, I'm super excited to welcome back Cliff Williams on the show. Cliff Williams is a principal advisor of maintenance and reliability at People and Processes, which is a global consulting and education services firm focused on the full spectrum of physical asset management. Cliff is also a member of the board of directors for the Plant Engineering and Maintenance Association of Canada. Welcome back to the podcast, Cliff. I'm super excited to learn from you. So great to be back, Ryan. It's Definitely great to have this opportunity and the audience is growing by the day. So it's great that you can spread the word and, and help the people on their journey. So it's, it really is. It's a pleasure. You know, literally this morning, I got a message on LinkedIn from just someone saying how much they love listening to their podcast while they're working and really makes me appreciate everything that we do and the impact that it's having to, you know, the industry. Yeah, no, you should be proud. <laughs> so I'm, and I'm more than happy to, to help where I can. Well, hey, yeah, I think this is a great segue. You know, you and I, we, we've spoken before, um, but maybe for the podcast listeners who hadn't listened to the first episode that we had done together, Cliff, how did you get first introduced to maintenance and reliability? What was your journey? Many years ago, I actually started out as an apprentice, as I'm sure, you know, the, the new people to the so the community are, are starting out. I started out as an apprentice in the UK, was lucky enough to get involved in uh, British Steel's effort to do better maintenance management and got involved into the computerized maintenance management systems, which in my day were the size of a double decker bus or a semi truck. That's that was the computers and the processes were, were kind of the same. So it was great, great learning. Emigrated to Canada after 40 years ago, again, still in the steel industry, but then made a nice move to pulp and paper where it was a great learning. Became the, the maintenance superintendent at the mill, jumped to food, worked at Coca-Cola, Kraft, Wrigley's, done packaging, and then the last 14, 15 years, I was the reliability and maintenance manager for Urco Worldwide, which is a chemical uh, manufacturer based in Canada, but with plants uh, across Canada in the US and South America. That was a great experience because uh, we were able to see not just different applications, but different cultures. And, and that was, that was a, a cool experience. During that time, uh, some people felt that I had something to offer. So I got involved in consulting and teaching and uh, with people and processes. And I've, I've been doing, I'm still doing that, um, teaching kind of veered off with PMAC a little to the, the, the more holistic asset management scene. All right. What a great journey, Cliff. It sounds like you started out again as an apprentice, we did some IC work, worked as a manager, and now you're kind of working as a consultant where you see all different types of you know, problems, opportunities in, in different industries. You know, the, the topic that I want to really focus on today is, you know, what it's like to be a manager and ultimately like how to get to that next level. For all of our podcast listeners, I think we're all constantly thinking about, okay, well, what comes next within my career? And I think what would be really interesting, Cliff, is, you know, just sharing, like, how, how did you go from, you know, individual contributor to manager? And, you know, what, what was that journey like for you? And if you have any advice or recommendations for people who want to follow in that, that same footstep as you? I was not the best tradesman. I was <laughs> definitely not the best tradesman. I was not the person that you know, could fix things in a minute or the go-to guy in the plant and, and, and all things like that. I was never that person. I, if, if anything, I was on the lower end of the spectrum when it came to being what we consider you know, a good tradesman. Luckily enough, I, I had the mindset where I was, I was sometimes good at solving process problems. So, you know, so very often we see, uh, okay, we've got a problem, let's call maintenance, maintenance, get involved, and suddenly find out that actually it's got nothing to do with maintenance. It's got to do with what's been happening, you know, on the process and on the equipment and what's been, how they're being operated. So I, I because I wasn't that good, 
I didn't dive in to this, okay, I'm going to fix this maintenance thing. I took much more the approach of, well, let's actually find the problem. And, and if we can find the problem, then maybe, you know, I won't get caught out by, you know, being shown as to being not that good person. <laughs> and, and that's really, you know, what, what organizations want. Yeah. It, that's what they're looking for. And the other thing that I recognized, and I guess they recognized as well, was that I was good at working with people. That's what I was good at. I, 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 you know, and we even had, you know, the tradespeople, the, my, my fellow tradespeople would be happy to come and work with me because I was taking them down a different path. Instead of suddenly, you know, let's blame maintenance and get them involved. It was, okay, let's go try and figure out this problem and realize, okay, this is a joint problem. This is a collaborative solution. This is, and, and my fellow tradespeople used to like that. And so when they were making me or, or offering me the role as manager, uh, they felt confidence that I could work with my fellow tradespeople, you know, and, and again, it wasn't this idea of I was the, the, the best tradesperson that, you know, and, and sometimes we see that in organizations, they say, oh, that, you know, he's great. He can solve, he can solve these things. He can do these things quickly and, and he can get this back up and running quickly. Let's make him a supervisor, not realizing that when you make him a supervisor, he doesn't need those skill sets anymore. Yeah. Those skill sets need now to be in someone else. And his, the skill sets that he requires are the ones that sort of says, okay, can he work collaboratively? Can he motivate his people? Can he get the people involved? Can he get all of these things? And so, you know, that is, that makes a much more effective or, or much shorter learning curve for somebody who gets made up from a tradesperson into a supervisor or into a manager or whatever it is, if they can figure that out and not, not kind of depend on their, their trade skill sets because they're not the ones that you're going to use when you move up into that role. You know, I, I guess the next question that I have, which, you know, I wonder if you you find you've seen some of these differences, but the difference between going from, you know, even manager to a leader or part of the executive team, because I imagine with a lot of the work that you do on the consulting side, you're working, you know, maybe not even with the managers, you're actually working with the leadership team. Well, I, I wonder if you've seen like a difference in the way that the leadership team views and looks at maintenance and reliability versus how the management layer does, or maybe the, even the individual contributor layer. I don't want to use the word blame, but blame is the word I'll use because that ends up what it is. It's they will blame and sort of uh, point at maintenance and say maintenance is not doing its job. And, and then it will, you know, the, the managers below that will react accordingly and they will be, okay, it's maintenance. So what are we going to do with maintenance? Focus is on maintenance and all of these things. And the people on the shop floor are just shaking their heads and saying, I don't know what they're on about. This has got nothing to do with maintenance, you know, but they kind of see that the problem's there. Or sometimes they see that because the executive level and manager, uh, you know, uh, don't understand what really maintenance is really about and how maintenance can be effective, they actually get in the way. You know, when you, when you do a surveys, we do surveys and things like that, we find out that you know, senior leadership sometimes account for about 20% of the problems that maintenance face mm. because of their attitude and because that they won't allow maintenance to do what they need to do. And, and they drive, uh, you know, all of the wrong behaviors. And this happens because they don't really have collaborative or cascading goals. Yeah, There's a disconnect between the goal for the leadership and the goal for the managers and the goals for the people on the shop floor. The ones that we see where it works, it's because you can see that, okay, the, the executive leadership has said, these are our goals and they've gone to the management group and they say, okay, what do you need to do to support our goals? Mm -hmm. And they would say, we need this. Okay, those are your goals. And then they would go and say, okay, now to the shop floor level, what does the shop floor level need to do for you to achieve your goals? And they'd be told this, this, this. Okay, then that's the shop floor goals. So now we see them flowing up and flowing down and, and the guys on the floor say, okay, if we achieve this, we know that the manager is going to achieve that. And if the manager achieves that, 
then the leadership group are going to be happy because they're achieving their goals. But quite often, the goals are so disconnected and so siloed that uh, there's no way that it can flow. And there's no way that we can, you know, really make a, a difference. And the people in the shop floor un- understand that very, very quickly. On a similar topic, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people in the industry and we talk to a lot of you know, individual contributors, managers, and oftentimes we, we hear a common theme, which is like, okay, well, I feel like my, my career at a, is at a dead end. You know, I've been a maintenance manager for a while. Like, what, where do I go next? Or, hey, I've been a technician. I don't really want to get into management. Like, that's not really my cup of tea. But I don't know what to do next. Any advice for those type of people? Well, uh, first of all, they've got to join the maintenance community. Obviously, that's what they need to do because that's where you kind of get these ideas from. If you're lost and you're struggling and you can't see that, if you join things like, you know, the maintenance community, you'll see questions, you'll see what other people are doing. There's there's lots of information out there. And, and like I say, communities like the maintenance community are where you can get an idea of where you want to go. And those people that really struggle to find somewhere, a path, are usually because they don't feel they're contributing in what they're doing. And yeah. so they can't see that next level. Those that believe they're contributing can kind of see the next level. Well, now that I've done this, okay, maybe I could go and talk to, you know, the executives of the organization and maybe start a cross-functional thing because I really understand what, you know, where I contribute, but I can also see where I can contribute more. And uh, I always had the approach that if I thought that there was a job that was out there that looked interesting, I applied for it, (laughs) irrespective of whether I actually had the, you know, the the qualifications or any of those things. And and I, I actually, over my career, I actually got two jobs that I had really no qualifications for. And, you know, and, and I asked the people afterwards, they said, well, we were actually quite interested in trying to figure out why you would apply for this. So, you know, we, we, we don't, and when you, you know, when you interviewed, we see that, okay, yeah, you didn't necessarily have these qualifications, but you had an attitude, yeah. you had an interest, you had a passion that we could bring you up to speed with the education piece, but for us to get somebody who's got the education and turn them into somebody who's passionate or interested or all of these things and have that attitude, we're not going to be able to do it. So we'll take that. And t- there were two jobs that, that I ended up with, as I say, I shouldn't have ended up with, but <laughs> and they were they were great. And they were successful. I have such a personal experience with this idea of um, imposter syndrome. And, and my personal experience, Cliff, is essentially like, this is my first time running a company. And every two weeks, when we have a new hiring class that starts here at Upkeep, it becomes the largest company that I had ever grown, the largest company that I had ever managed. And I constantly have this imposter syndrome. But what I realized after talking to a lot of my peers is that everyone feels the same way. And ultimately, it comes back to the attitude and the desire to learn and get better than we were yesterday. That's the thing that matters the most. So even if we don't have every single one of the the qualifications, what matters most is our attitude. So I've loved our conversation today, Cliff. Um, The way that we've been ending these podcasts is actually with a quick fire round of questions. So the goal here is, you know, ask a question, get your thoughts in 30 seconds or less. You uh, open it? Can't do it. Can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been talked to. I, I, I have friends who say to me, you know, like, or, or when we get into discussions, um, give Cliff something to eat because it's the only time he's not talking. So, <laughs> oh, All right, let, let's try. All uh, right, Cliff, what's a technology that you're most most excited by for for the future? AI. If, if it can be used properly, you know, big data, AI, but if it's not used properly, it's going to be a, as much of a waste as many of the technologies that are not implemented properly. Favorite memory of the biggest win you've had in the maintenance reliability space within your career? Probably in the paper industry uh, when we broke production records after having been really struggling. 
and uh, oh, we, we actually had five, wow. five months of zero downtime in one year. So that was, yeah, that was the, the best. And being allowed by the owners of the company to send gift cards to the significant others of the tradespeople. That's and, awesome. and thank them for, for all the work that their significant others have done. So that was, that was cool. That's awesome. Uh, biggest mistake that you've learned from within your career? Probably waited too long. It took me, uh, because I was a, not the greatest of trades, uh, I was offered leadership jobs and turned them down because mm -hmm. I didn't think that I would... I would succeed. And from then on, I took the attitude that I mentioned earlier, apply for everything. And if you succeed, great. And I think that's what it is, was that if I'd have taken them then, I, I, I would have learned quicker. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, is that, that, that's the biggest mistake was just not moving on when I should have. All right. Thank you, Cliff, for going through those quick fire uh, set of questions with me. Last question is, how can our listeners uh, connect with you and follow you on your journey? Um, you can uh, look at people and processes, of course, look at people processes. I'm on that website. I'm on the definitely maintenance community again. And um, you will see that you will get the alternate view posts that I give. I, I tend to look at uh, the alternate view. LinkedIn, yes, there are still people wrong. But I'm doing my best to correct them. So, um, yeah, LinkedIn. So pretty much out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cliff, for joining us. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in to today's episode of the Maintenance Community Podcast. My name is Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder of Upkeep. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm super active. Uh, so you can also find myself and Cliff, as he mentioned, on the Maintenance Community Slack group. You can feel free to ask us any questions from today's episode or suggest future topics as well. You can sign up at upkeep.org. Thank you again, Cliff. I hope to connect with you again. And uh, thank you to all of our listeners. Uh, until, until next time. It's been a pleasure. Bye, Ryan. Bye.